Hello and welcome to Security. Today I'm going to be beginning a series of AWS hands-on labs that I'm going to be doing to gain hands-on experience with AWS, but also help anyone that need, that's maybe preparing for the CCP or the um, Solutions Architect exam and needs to get hands-on experience with also with AWS. So today we're going to be beginning with IPs and I'm going to be showing you the different types of IP addresses on AWS and how they work. So we have private IP addresses, we have public IP addresses, and we have elastic IP addresses. And I'm going to be um, showing you all of them today. So let's get right into it. The first thing I'm going to do is go to the EC2 service. The EC2 service allows you to create compute instances in the AWS cloud. Next, I'll click on instances to launch an instance. Then I'll click on launch instances. Select the Amazon Linux 2 AMI instance family and the T2 micro instance type because it's free here eligible. So I'll leave the network as default VPC. Just select the first um, subnet or availability zone. Leave it to auto assign public IP addresses. Um, leave the rest of the settings as default. And I'll click on next. To add storage, I'll leave the storage as default. Click on next, add tags. I'll just give it a name. Linux server. And click on configure security groups. So security groups is where you um, open port basically on your instance. So I want to have XSH access to my instance. I'm going to create a new security group. I'll give it the name SSH Access. And um, this gives TCP SSH Access on the port 22. Um, and I'm going to select from anywhere. So that gives it SSH Access on port 22 from any IP address, both for IPv4 and IPv6 IP addresses. There's also the option of selecting a custom range of IP addresses you want to you want access from where you could select your own your like your public IP address. So there's only um access from that your public IP address to the instance that you're creating. So yeah I'm just gonna review now and launch. I'll create a new key pair because I need the key pair to be able to um log on to my instance via SSH basically. So I'm gonna click on create a new key pair, give it a name. So I'll just give it the name SKP, which is server key pair. Click on download key pair and then launch instance. So now the instance is launching. I can click on view instances. You can see the instance state is pending. I'll just give it some time to run. So now the instance state is on, is on running that the instance is on the running state and we can select the server and see different details about the server like the public IPv4 address, the private IPv4 address, public IPv4 DNS and the private IPv4 DNS name. We could also scroll down to see some other details but we are not going to be dealing with all the details today. What we're going to be dealing with is the IP, IP addresses, specifically IPv4 addresses. So the public IPv4 address is the address that you can use to reach this instance over the internet. The private IPv4 address is the IP address of this instance on your virtual private network. And other instances on your network can use the IP address to reach this instance. So same thing for the DNS. The DNS, private and public DNS is basically the DNS address. Um, that you can use to reach this instance as well. Okay, so we can also check out the security tab and we see the security group that we attached to this instance. I guess it's um, SSH access. Inbound SSH access on port 22 from any IP address and um, outbound to any IP address, any destination as well, and any port. I'll be doing another video on security groups, but today we are focusing on IP addresses. 
Okay, so now the instance is running and it has passed all the status checks. We can now connect to the instance. So you can use your um, CMD on Windows, your command prompt, or you could, uh, uh, personally I have this um, Git Bash um, application. I'm gonna link it in the description. And what it does is it gives you sort of like a Linux term. It, um, it allows you to interact with your Windows machine, basically like a Windows with a bash um, shell. So with it, I can run um, Linux commands like ls, like pwd, that's the print working directory. I can change that um, into different directories as well and um, list the contents of the directory. It is here. I can basically just run Linux commands using it like I'm on a Linux machine. That app you can use is Potty. You can also use Potty to log on to the machine. I'm not going to be using Potty today. I'm going to be using the Git Bash. But yeah, with Potty, all you have to do is put in the host name the IP address here and um, also um, add the, the key that you downloaded and use it to log in. I'll probably use Spotty in subsequent videos to show you how to use it as well. Maybe link a video in the description as well. But for now, yeah, let's connect to the instance. So click on connect and select SSH client. And um, so before you connect, you have to first of all run this command, um, chmod 400 and the key that you downloaded to change the permissions and protect it from public access. And that's why I like using this Git application because you can run Linux command directly on it. It's a bit, um, it's not as straightforward doing it with body or with um, your command prompt on Windows. So. I'm just going to go into the, my downloads folder now with the Git Bash application and and use an ls to confirm that the key is in this location and you can see it in the location and now I can run the command to change the permissions on the key and protect it from public access. So I run the command and now I can check the permissions on the key. And now you can see the permissions have changed. So now I can run the command to um, log into my instance using the public DNS address. So I'll just copy the command and paste it and run it. And um, type yes to accept the fingerprint. And yeah, basically the public DNS address or the public IP, IP address is what you can use to connect to the um, instance over the internet. And as you can see, the private IP address is what shows when you connect because that is the IP address of the instance on the VPC. So this instance has internet access because of it has a public IP, IP address. And um, you can confirm that by pinging Google. Ping google.com and you can see we are getting responses, which means that our instance has um, internet access. This would not have been the, this wouldn't have been the case if we did not um, select an IP a public IP address when creating the instance. Okay, so now we can go back to AWS to view our instance, and we can see the public IP before address. So right now it's. It can, that uh, public IP address cannot be pinged over the internet because if you remember in our security group, we gave it only SSH access. So security group is kind of like, a, it's a firewall basically that protects, that we can use to protect our instances from um, attacks on the internet. So it's, it's kind of like one line of defense. There are other lines of defense for security group. Um, security group is one of them that's, that is instance specific. Okay, so that's not what we're going to look at. We'll look at that in the, in the next video, but today we're just going to be looking at how the IP addresses work. So now back to my terminal and um, still connected to the instance. I'm going to create the file and I'll echo hello from security. 
and send it to a file that I'm going to call hello.txt, basically a text file. So if I list now, you can see the file that I created, and if I open the show the content, you can see it says hello from security. So I'm going to show you how IP addresses work, as well as how it works when you stop and you terminate, the difference between stopping and terminating an instance in the cloud. So now I'm stopping the instance. Um, you can see, the notice the public IP address and the private IP address before I stop the instance. And what I'll do now is I'll go to instance state and stop the instance. You can see this instance state changes from running to stopping. And I'll just wait for, wait for wait for the instance to be done stopping. So now you can see the instance state has changed to stop, stopped rather. And what you can notice now, now is when you look at a private IPv4 address, the private IPv4 address stays the same when we stop an instance. It's the same I, I private IP address. But we can see that the public IP IP before address has been let go, basically. So this instance no longer has the public IP before address, the same public IP before address. So usually when we stop an instance running on AWS, it's, it retains the private IP address, that's the IP address on the AWS cloud, but it loses or it lets go of the public IP before address. So, and when, um, when we restart the instance, it gets another public IPv4 address, but that is different from the IPv4 address that we um, we are using at the beginning, before or rather before we stopped it. Now I'll start the instance so we can observe that as well. Now we can see the instance state has changed to pending again, and we'll just wait for it to start up successfully. Okay, so now the instance state is back to running, and if we select the instance, we can see the public IPv4 address has changed from the public IPv4 address that we had um, earlier, but the private IPv4 address still stays the same. And now um, our connection that we had before without stopped, actually, if we check it, let's see the connection was closed when we stopped the instance. And to connect to the to the instance now, we have to use the new um, the new DNS address. We can't use the same DNS address because the, that DNS address was a public DNS address, which all it is based on the public IPv4 address, and it changes when we change when the public IP, IPv4 address changes. So now we we'll connect to the new IPv4 address, and um, if what we're going to notice is that because we did not terminate the instance, the file that we created is still on the instance. You can see when we list we still see hello hello.txt and if we open it up, we see the same the same um information that that we that we sent into the file as well. And that's because um EC2 instances by default use EBS volumes and EBS volumes are retained when you stop an instance. They only, you only lose it when you terminate an instance. At some point, I'll do a lab on volumes and storage types, and we'll look more into EBS volumes. So back to my AWS console. If you want an instance to have a public IP address that persists even after you stop it, you have to use elastic IP addresses. So we're going to look at how they work. So scroll down, select Elastic IPs, and click on Allocate Elastic IP Address. We'll call, select one from Amazon's pool of IPv4 addresses, and click on Allocate. Elastic IPs are not free, so you pay for as long as um, you use them, basically. I believe the payment is based on how long you keep the IP address. Next thing is to associate this Elastic IP address with our instance. We'll select it and click on associate elastic IP address. And here on that instance, we'll select our instance that we want to um, associate it to. 
So we have the option of either associating it with a network interface or with an instance. And we also have the option to allow it to be reassociated with another instance, even if it's already um, associated with a resource. If we want to reassociate it, we can just overwrite basically, but we're not going to check that. We'll leave that blank. And now when we go to instances and refresh, you can see the public IPv4 of our instance is now the elastic, um, it's now the elastic IPv4 address. So if you go back to our um, terminal, you can see it has lost connection basically and it's kind of like hanging. I'll just give it some time to finish loading. Okay, so now it's done loading and you can see the connection was reset and that's because it lost the IP, the public IPv4 address that we used to connect. So we have to reconnect using the new public IPv4 address or the public IPv4 DNS. So that's what I'll just do now. Click on connect, copy the command or the DNS, go back to my console and paste this in. Um, say yes, and now we are back into our uh, instance. You see, it all still retains the same private IPv4 address. And if we, we can still see our hello.txt file with the same content. So now we are connected to the instance with an elastic IP. Let's see what happens when we stop the instance. So when I click on stop, you see right now it's on the instance on stopping state. And um, we just wait for it to finish stopping. Okay, so now our instance is in the stop state. And we can see that it still retains the same public IP before address. Um, of course, it's going to lose connection. The connection is going to close because the instance is in the stop state. But the IPv4, public IPv4 address is, retain, is retained. And now we can start, we can restart the instance. I'll just wait for it to start back up. And even after our instance started up, you can still see it retains the same public IPv4 address. And we can still connect to it using the same command with the same DNS address because it retains the same public IPv4 address. And check in, we can still see our hello.txt file and the same content in our hello.txt file. So that's the end of our lab. We can exit to log out of our AWS machine, close our Git terminal, and um, clean up our lab environment on AWS. So yeah, what I did here was uh, I made a mistake. I, tem I terminated the instance, but the first thing you need to do is actually go to um, your Elastic IP addresses and um, release the allocation from the instance before you terminate it. Anyways, now you can see that when we terminate an instance, it loses everything, the IP before, private IP before public IP before address, it loses um, also the public and private IP before DNS. So this is, this is what you this is what will happen when, if you, terminate the instance before releasing the IP um, address. When you try to when you try to disassoci dissociate the elastic IP address from the instance, you're gonna be getting an error message for about five to ten minutes before you'll be able to finally dissociate it and delete it. So as you can see I was getting the error that the IP address could not be disassociated because the instance has already been terminated. And like I said, all I did was I waited for some time and just came back. When I did it, it had already been disassociated automatically because that recognized an instance was um, terminated. And all I did was click on release elastic IP address and um, confirm release. So in this lab, we looked at the different types of IP addresses on AWS and how they work. In the next video, we're going to be looking at the um, security group and NSCL um, firewalls. If these videos are helpful to you, please like and subscribe to support my channel. And um, if you have any questions, leave them in the description as well. And I'll get to them as soon as I can. Thanks for watching as usual, and I'll see you in the next video.